Billy Dillard from Billy Dillard Art. This is a short video on uh, taking the sculpting epoxy and applying it on one of the mushroom, the blanks. This is 307 Light by Polygem. I've already got it mixed up and you can see that in a previous video on how to mix it. And now I'm gonna be applying it. So you can see my tools. This is just a couple pieces of uh, scrap kindling. That's what it is. That's my high dollar sculpting tools for making mushroom. So anyway, um, what I do is I'll usually keep my gloves damp a little bit, grab me a chunk off, and let's see. Um, let's do this one right here. So just take it, squish it on there, man. Pretty easy. Um, grab me another chunk. I love working with this stuff. Yeah, the texture of it is, is actually like working with clay. So if you've ever worked with like a medium clay, this is real similar. And you can see how easy it is to smooth out. You just dampen your, your gloves. After you put it on, you can just smooth it out. Works really, really easy. Okay, let me grab some more. I'm going to do this one really quick. That way you, I don't bore you guys with a long extended video on how to sculpt a mushroom. Like I say, you can do different kinds of mushrooms. But this is a particular style I picked for this fairy house project that I'm working on. Alright, so we got enough on there that we can come back and create some texture. So there again, on your little sticks here, make sure they're wet. And then you can just kind of come in and just start creating your texture here. Um, mushrooms are pretty sporadic, so I wouldn't worry about trying to be exacting with it because you're not... I haven't seen mushrooms yet that are exactly the same. So this is uh, the technique I like on this particular style of mushroom. Yeah. Now we just cut in some lines, and there again, I don't concern myself about being, if I don't like it, I can just really wipe it out pretty easy. Okay, let's see, we need to create a different kind of texture going on here, so we will do that. So got these going. Now we'll start another row of these, it's kind of like another layer when the mushroom does the strange things that it does then come back over it a little bit right here now I want to add a globular up top here because that's usually the way it seems like they want to do a little more right there there again, make sure you keep your tools wet. That way you don't have any problems with the sculpting material wanting to stick to your tools here. Now I'm just going to create some little random texture. And we can come back in and create some of those breaks that we lost when I created that other texture. That's a good thing about this. I can say it's um, real forgiving. Now... I want to go get me a, a paintbrush. Just use the brush over real lightly with the texture, so I'll be right back. Okay, there again, I'm going to take the just, just a typical chip brush. That's what they call them, throw away. Just dip it some water, and I can just kind of lightly, um, they call it knocking it down, different terms. But what I'm just doing is I'm just kind of softening up the texture a little bit. That's all I'm doing right now. Just where it's not quite as hard I guess is a good word for it and you can soften that up as much as you want and then I'm gonna take this tool come back in and see if I can create some other kind of little weird little texture going on and it's a little bit different and that's what I'm after grab my other tool recreate some of this Step up here and create a little texture there. And 
And that's pretty much it for this one. There's no sense on these particular mushrooms overworking them. And there you go. So uh, hope that'll help you out. If you have any questions or comments, uh, subscribe and comment. Give me a comment. Um, like I say, if you have any questions, you can email me. You'll find my email underneath this video. I'll be more than happy to answer whatever questions you have. Thanks a lot, and y'all have a good day.